and let's talk about 2024 and movies. So it was really funny. I saw a lot of different breakdowns about what was going on with the movies in 2023. I did a video, if you guys didn't see, talking about this David Ayer tweet where he talked about the reaction that people have now where they seem to be going out of their way to be angry about movies. And in that, I got into a little bit about how the box office is going to be framed for this past year that we just experienced as a Basically, what we're experiencing right now is a bit of a bounce back from what we had prior. It made about $9 billion at the box office this year, which is up from previous years during the pandemic in 2022. But it's not back to the 2019 levels of like $11 billion at the box office. But there was a tweet from Discussing Film very recently that was basically, it was like all the sequels that are going to be coming out in the next couple of years and there's a in the next year and there's a lot of them but i was looking at this last night i want to show you this guys this is the absolute state of hollywood there's a, there's some stuff to look forward to but this one right here twisters i don't know what okay. the original twister is twister was the 19 1996 i believe somebody can correct me if i'm wrong i believe the 1996 masterpiece with bill paxton and helen hunt and what we're going to get now is Twisters with Glenn Powell and this other lady whose name I've never heard of before. And it's going to be what hilarious because uh, m most likely you're going to get a bunch of ridiculous climate propaganda in Twisters. But on the list of... Oh, no not, way not the game Twister. It's about... No, it's about... Tornadoes. tornadoes. Okay. To that makes sense. So... <laughs> You're right. That is an easy climate propaganda angle. <laughs> on the list of movies that no one has ever asked, the sequels that no one has ever asked for. And it's not a sequel even. This is, it says right here, Twisters is definitely not a Twister reboot or a continuation, says Glenn Powell. We're not trying to recreate the story from the first one. It's because it doesn't need to be. It would be like making a prequel to The Day After Tomorrow. The Day After The Day After Tomorrow or something <laughs> like that. Are you insane? I like you look at this list of movies. There are a couple of things on here that are objectively something to look forward to. Like I'm I'm looking forward to Argyle. I'm for the most part looking forward to Dune Part 2. Godzilla after uh, Godzilla. Uh Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters Afterlife was good. This sequel could be fine. I don't know. Furiosa the CGI looks really really bad. You said if looked good to you. Yeah, that's John Krasinski's yes. kids movie. Um, that looked kind of cute. It's about imaginary friends. Ballerina w could be fine. It's a John Wick movie. I was not a fan of the Continental TV show, but if it's a movie, I think that the series works better in film format mm -hmm. than it does long form television. Bad Boys 4 was inevitable because Bad Boys for Life, the fact that they didn't save the name Bad Boys for Life for part four is insane, but <laughs> what yeah. it did so good pre-pandemic that it was always going to get a sequel. And maybe this will be Will Smith's uh, like redemption arc. If he can look cool in this movie, maybe people will forget all of the abuse he's been suffering at the hands of his wife right <laughs> i'm i'm definitely looking forward to joker fully ado yeah uh and and a, and a lot of people are looking forward to borderlands based on the game and that's that's an eli roth and he eli roth is the one who made uh thanksgiving which did really really well oh, yeah. this year uh and then deadpool a oh, lot of people are looking forward to deadpool gypsy rose went to the movie theaters uh like right after getting out of prison and What'd she said see? she really liked thanksgiving <laughs> There you go. Oh man! Why would you? Why, why would, would the you go first see thing you see be a slasher? Bro, bro go see a comedy. Go or see something. Barbie. Go see Barbie. Um, like Alien, <laughs> Beetlejuice too, maybe because Jenna Ortega. That's right? gonna do well just because Jenna Ortega is in it. Venom three and Craven are suffering from the we're the Sony of it all for Marvel. Uh, like I liked and I liked Venom. I didn't like Venom two as much. The Madam Web trailer looked ass. And, and on the list with bad. and I'm sorry, but Twisters might be the highest I've ever seen on the list of like who the hell was asking for this. But Gladiator two is right up there. Is Russell? Crow? No, 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 no. He's not in it. He's not. In the, he doesn't. Well, who this. is? Uh, I hadn't even heard of the actor if I remember. Really. So. Uh, uh. A, and then we're going to be getting a Lord of the Rings animated movie on... It's painful. And on the Christmas season, a Karate Kid movie that has nothing to do with Cobra Kai. Are they stupid? And then... Cobra Kai was like a hit. Why don't they have that cast? Sonic 3, which 
I'll be fair. I loved Sonic 1 and 2, so Sonic 3 could be fine. I don't know. It's still a third in a series. And then this Not one. Not necessary. Mufasa, The Lion King, a prequel to The Lion King. So Mufasa is his yes. dad? Yes. And it's, I mean, we don't know if it's animated or if it's the photorealistic, it's the photo uncanny realistic. valley weird shit that everyone hated. Yeah. Uh, I have no... Uh, desire to see Kingdom, uh, <laughs> Kingdom uh, of, of the, the Planet, Planet of the Apes, Apes because it doesn't Bad have title. Matt Reeves in it, and it's just this list is just Despicable Me four and and Transformers one, which is an animated movie. So there's all of these things coming out, and all it says is bloat, and and then and again, of course, the number one thing everyone says is Hollywood is dead. There's no creativity. No, there's creativity. They will not greenlight creativity. We've had multiple people tell us, like, look, the scripts are there. They will never greenlight the scripts because there's no IP behind it. There's no chance to tie it in with other things. There's no brand well, recognition. They're not going to give it to you. Why was it different decades before when they greenlit new ideas all the time? Because these IPs were being built at that time. Well, yeah, they didn't have the excuse to fall back on an existing mm -hmm. IP at the time, but you know, there's no less risk in developing something new. Nowadays, I think a lot of it is because as we go to tent, as tentpole films become more and more common, meaning that we're getting more of them released every year, everything that would have been greenlit for a movie, I talk about this all the time, all the time. it's the Tony, I call it basically, we need the, a Tony Scott. We need a big, like a mid-budget movie man who can make the movie like Deja Vu or, uh, or um, uh, Man on Fire, like, uh, actually, that, that was like $100 million, I think those ones cost, and that was like in the in the 90s. But the point is, you need those mid-budget movies that used to be, they would make part of their budget up in the theaters, but then they'd make the rest of it back on DVD sales and rental, like in, in basically selling out to rentals and stuff like that, and they're not doing that anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, because it all goes directly to streaming. And now we're seeing the way things are going with streaming, there's only going to be incentives for the people who that, actually make stuff that works. That Amazon price increase was just twisting the knife. I could have... I could do a whole video on that's like, two dollars more expensive three, for no three dollars more expensive nine. monthly for a an ad tier that they didn't ask you if you wanted no 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 no, no. you're it, it it stays the same now like what you pay now for amazon prime is the ad tier mm -hmm. if you want to pay the three dollars more to get rid of ads you have to sign up for it in pre-order yeah and i was and you don't have expedited shipping anymore no, right. You, you would still get the so, so for what you're paying for Amazon Prime with your free shipping will now also include ads. But if you okay. want Amazon Prime without ads, you got to pay three dollars more. And I'm so got beaten it. down by the system. I'm like, bro, can you just charge me the extra and not make me go through the process of having to, <laughs> to sign up for it? Because I'm on my. They're buck breaking you. Basically, like I'm like I'm like Bad. I don't want I don't want ads. Right? Um, so, Mickey Seventeen seems like an interesting. Uh, premise. This has Robert Pattinson playing a clone who refuses to relinquish his gig when his replacement shows up. That kind of, it's not a full trailer yet. It's only a teaser. Uh, also, but that's an interesting concept. Also, the Fall Guy. We've talked about the Fall, fall guy. guy. The Fall Guy looks, it's about we a We need man. a comeback of rom coms. Yep. And a, this is a rom com a and action movie together. So it's like something for the guys and the gals. Yeah, like this, like the Sandra Bullock one. It has in star Chantier. power. Right? It's yep. Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt. Yep. Correct? Yep. And it, Looks and it's, good. And it's got the kind of... Um uh, if you ever if you saw free, if you saw Free Guy or even if you liked a movie like Bullet Train, humor like in tone, it's yeah. it, it falls on that line there. But the rest of these, it's just like dude, what? Challengers looks awful. It's like an anti rom com. Yeah. This is supposedly being marketed to women. It is a love triangle story, except it has nothing to do with love. Um, basically, Zendaya stars in it as a tennis player. Um, she has two white male love interests, and I'm not kidding you, she actually has a line in the trailer where she says, I'm taking such good care of my little white boys. So yes, Mary mentioning the race actually matters because she mentions the race in the trailer. It's, it's extremely, it, it is like, kind of giving an interracial porn plot line, like interracial threesome Well, you can see from the, what they decided to use this for is the, the This for is the, the thumbnail, yeah. okay? Like them on a bed and 
Zendaya has a line where she screams at them saying, what makes you think I want anyone to fall in love with me? Women love that. That really yeah, speaks to the really female psyche. To yeah, they totally don't want to be fallen in love with. That's great. Market that to women and see how it goes. I really don't like this. Yeah. Um, I don't even want to review it. So moving on. Uh, we, we are going to get Nosferatu this year, which is uh, it's Robert Eggers' next movie. If you liked the movie um, The Northman, something to possibly look forward to. I wasn't a fan of The Northman, but I guess it's still like a dude movie. Yes, right? it's a dude movie. So the Joker, Folia Do will do well. I still believe that it's kind of a sign of the times. Like when Joker came out, it succeeded because the media was giving it the, the treatment and everybody was pushing back saying like, yeah. you're being insane, right? Now it's absolutely a, like, uh, it's got the stamp of approval from the establishment, but it's already built its audience now. So it'll probably do fine. So Deadpool this 3, month, um, we've got Night Swim coming out in a couple of days. And Deadpool 3 was moved to 2025. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, I looked at the trailer for Night Swim and it's literally just their backyard pool has a ghost in it. Uh-oh. What happens next when you play Marco Polo? <laughs> like, yeah, that's um, kind of low-hanging fr fruit. And then we're going to review the Mean Girls musical, which comes out next week. Uh, and for the people really looking forward to that. For the people wondering about the Lord of the Rings one, it's an animated movie. Yeah, is that CGI or is it going to be? No, it's anime style. Anime. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. The go check out the trailer for that. Well, it's, if you can capture like the the fan base for manga and anime and the fantasy yeah. genre fans, like the the Lord of the Rings fan base. So here's some that of the some really of the well. yeah, and here's some of the release dates. Like Mean Girls and and Beekeeper come out on the same day. I'm very sad. I'm gonna go see Beekeeper the next day. Yeah. Um, just literally to regain my sanity after having so it's an action up. movie like does he he's a beekeeper he has to weaponize the bees right i have no idea that the must be part yeah, of it. like is like it's it's the it's the it's the trait it's like the the there's also one from aaron eckhart called the bricklayer and it's like he's a he's in retirement he's just uh he's got a you know he's the ex-cia guy he's the ex you know, secret agent who just wants to live his quiet life and then something takes him out of retirement. And it's the revenge movies. It's what it's what Taken was. Sure. Right? So we got that. They are also re-releasing -re all of these flopped um, Pixar yep. movies that went to Disney Plus. So we've got Miller's Girl. That's the uh, the really, really controversial False Jenna Ortega. False Me Too claims yep. movie. We're, we should review that. And Argyle on in, Argyle. in February. I want to. I'm definitely want to read. Uh, you review want to see Dua Lipa on the big screen? Um, I don't know what Scrambled is. This is a, a Lionsgate mm -hmm. comedy movie. Maybe it's about chickens. Mm -hmm. And then Madam Web and Winnie the Pooh: Blood and Honey two both come out on the same day. So we'll probably have to review Madam Web and then go see yeah. Winnie the Pooh after the fact. Also, the Bob Marley Man. biopic comes out that day. The preview for the Bob Marley biopic was so corny i'm tired of the biopics not everyone needs or deserves a biopic bob marley deserves a biopic he's a why he's a pretty big deal is this a, just a generational thing it's a generational thing and the the trailer was just so cookie cutter it was like i want to change the world yep. and they do like a really over-the-top accent Ah, uh, somebody saying uh, Deadpool three was. Uh, I thought it was moved to twenty twenty five. I'm gonna I'm gonna double check on that here. Kung but, Fu Panda four yeah. is gonna probably make a lot of money. But we also get Dune two in March. Yes, I still need to finish the first Dune. I couldn't get through it. Um, okay, it got moved up July twenty twenty four. So it's this year, July twenty sixth. All right. So we we will be getting that this year. No longer March. No longer March. Okay. Okay. So there's a, it's, there's just, there's a lot coming out and I, I will say that most of it, my hope is that there's some, like some sleeper hits on streaming that end up working, like getting ec like, uh, um, extraction two was really, really good for me this year. Shows like twisted metal that I really, really enjoyed, but it's like, you can only expect so many of those every year. And most of our reviews go to theaters, right? Like we end up going to see yeah. these bigger budget movies that take more, but frozen empire from ghostbusters is March 29th civil war. If you remember that, that was the a 24 was that a 24 Blumhouse. It was a 24, right? I'm not sure. Uh, that comes out the no, same. Yeah, that was a 24. That comes out the same day as challengers. So I say we go see civil war in protest of the movie challengers. 
Deadpool, yeah. Deadpool is March 3rd. So originally it said March 3rd, but now it's been moved. Fall Guy comes out March 3rd. The Godzilla X Kong New Empire trailer was just so male brained yep. that I couldn't I couldn't do it. And it's gonna have a hard time capturing any audience after Godzilla minus one did the caught the fan uh, the like the the fan base the way that it did. Yeah. So um Despicable Me Four is on July third. Mufasa on July fifth. So dumb. So I don't I don't know what you want to do. And Venom on July twelfth. Okay. So there's a supposedly this Captain says America. Captain America: Brave New World on July 26th. I don't know if that one's been moved. Oh, I overheard a normie conversation about Marvel movies. What were they saying? They thought that they stopped making Marvel movies. Why? I'm serious. They thought that like what was it? They thought Endgame was the last Marvel movie that came out. Hmm. I'm serious. They didn't even know that they kept making them. Yeah. They're like, Marvel needs to come back. Like, why did they stop making movies? What I really that liked to prove that like they I really liked Avengers Endgame. <laughs> uh yeah, they're they're flopping hard. We, so and then we've got Craven on August 30th. We've got Beetlejuice on September 6th. Then we've got Saw, what is that, eleven on September twenty seventh, Joker Surprise. on October four on October fourth, and then was it Smile Two. Again, another movie that didn't need a sequel, but because it did so no. well. Um Surprise Beetlejuice would be not, not like closer. closer to Halloween. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yep. Wicked is coming out November twenty seventh. Can't wait to see my favorite celebrity couple in that one. There's just, there's a lot there's of... There's an untitled Disney animation also scheduled for the same day. I wonder what that one will be. There's just a lot of apathy for most of this stuff, right? Like, people are exhausted. People are sick of the repeated franchise, of the over-franchising of all mm -hmm. of these properties, that they're not getting anything new. But at the same time, whenever they get something new, it's very hard to sell people on these ideas because... You know, they don't get the marketing push that they do. The creator do. didn't yeah. do all. No, there's a, a lot of these movies don't, uh, they don't get the, but they also, they don't earn the word of mouth. They don't earn the word of mouth that they expected. The Godzilla minus one didn't do well because it had this massive marketing campaign. Mm -hmm. It did well because people started talking about it. Much yeah. in the same way that Top Gun Maverick, uh, sure, it had a decent marketing budget, but people were talking to their family and friends about it. So more people went and saw it. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.